The second question this week is the following. I'd like to know more about the link between depression and anxiety, especially the generalized global kind of anxiety with no real identifiable cause. Why do some people cope with anxiety or don't even feel any when others are riddled with it? Um, so there are actually two um, major aspects to my answer to this question. The first has to do with the relationship between um, depression and anxiety, and the second has to do with uh, the no identifiable cause aspect uh, of the anxiety referred to. Um, so, firstly, the relationship between depression and anxiety. I can't emphasize enough, uh, because this is really not widely enough known, I can't emphasize enough that there are different types of anxiety in the brain. Um, there's a brain system for fear anxiety, and there's a quite separate brain system for panic anxiety. Um, the uh, two systems uh, have a different anatomy, they have a different neurochemistry, and different sorts of environmental um, influences impact upon um, rendering uh, the one or the other Sense, more sensitive. Um, the, the, uh, uh, although uh, it's well known that um, depression and anxiety uh, co-occur in many patients, that is to say there's, there's a high degree of comorbidity, as they call it, between depression and anxiety, what's not sufficiently appreciated is that the sort of anxiety that is at issue in most uh, cases of depression is panic anxiety, not fear anxiety. Uh, just to clarify what I'm talking about, fear anxiety is trepidatious fear. That's the, that's the, the quality of it. Um, and uh, it has to do with the threat uh, of, of, of harm uh, to uh, bodily integrity, to life and limb. So there's, there's, a, there's a, a noxious stimulus which might harm me uh, is what evokes fear anxiety. Whereas panic anxiety is separation anxiety. It has to do with with uh, anxiety about loss, about becoming separated from uh, a loved one. And the quality, the feeling is panicky, <laughs> air hunger, um, oh, oh my God, oh my God, I, 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 I've lost him, I, 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 she's lost me, uh, where is she? And the behavior is uh, 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 searching and, uh, and uh, um, uh, um, uh, what we call separation distress vocalizations in, in, in us humans crying or calling out the name. Uh, that's not how we behave when we feel fear. When we feel fear, we freeze or we flee. We hope uh, to get away from the, the threatening stimulus, whereas in uh, uh, panic anxiety, we hope to find um, the, uh, what, 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 what we're attached to but uh, has become lost. Now, the reason that panic anxiety um, so commonly co-occurs with depression is because these uh, panic anxiety is part of a cascade um, which we call the separation distress response. In the acute phase of separation distress, um, in other words, in the acute phase of becoming separated, you feel panic and, and you search and you cry out. Um, that then uh, shifts uh, into a, a more chronic state which we call despair. And uh, despair is the normal um, uh, phenotype for depression. So that's why these two things occur uh, together so commonly. It's because they actually have um, their roots in the same system. Um, somebody who's sensitized to panic anxiety is more uh, likely to suffer depression um, and vice versa. Now um, there comes the question um, as to um, why this generalized form of anxiety, this, this panic anxiety, which so commonly co-occurs with depression, why it seems to be just that, generalized, in the sense that there's no identifiable cause, to use the, the words that, um, that the questioner used. Here we have to um, have recourse to the conceptual distinction between affects on the one hand and ideas or thoughts, representations, on the other hand. Affects um, are conscious by definition. An affect is by its very nature felt. So uh, the panicky feeling 
um, can't be unconscious, otherwise it isn't a panicky feeling. But the ideas that have triggered um, the feeling can be unconscious, in fact frequently are unconscious. And that's how the situation arises that one feels panic uh, but it appears to have no identifiable cause. It's not that there's no identifiable cause, it's or rather the word uh, that needs to be emphasized is that it's not identifiable. It doesn't mean that there hasn't been some specific uh, uh, trigger uh, of the ideas um, uh, that, that give rise to the panicky feeling. The sufferer or the observer of the sufferer uh, just doesn't know what those ideas are and uh, the, the, therefore the panic appears um, 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 un it appears meaningless, appears uh, uh, unjustifiable. Frequently, the, 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 the ideas that are triggered are very early ideas, very early experiences. Um, and it doesn't have to be obvious why those early experiences have been triggered, because us human beings, we have all these layers of representation and re-representation, what we call symbolization, so that um, something might trigger an early experience of loss which isn't itself obviously a loss of the same kind at all. Uh, so even in the abstract sense, you might, there might be a loss of status or, or a loss uh, uh, in, in relation to self-esteem, which uh, when you dig down to its, to its ideational roots, that loss of self-esteem has to do with the, the, the feeling that's uh, uh, triggered by the loss of somebody loving you, who you or who you feel loved by, and uh, this then... Um, uh, has the same ideational form um, as a, a later event, which doesn't look like a loss at all. I hope uh, I'm being clear there. Uh, the, the main point is that there is a, a very deep link between separation, distress, panic anxiety, that is, on the one hand, and depression, uh, despair, uh, that is, on the other. And the second point being that the feelings are conscious, but the Thoughts that go with those feelings uh, very frequently are not. And that's how you get the sort of picture that we're talking about. I must just say that um, what I've said here about the link between panic anxiety and depression is also uh, an important um, a pointer towards the way in which we need to develop psychiatric uh, nosology, psych uh, the, the, the classification of psychiatric disorders. Um, so that, for example, in the DSM, um, which is so widely used, we have a category called anxiety disorders and another category called mood disorders. And uh, in fact, in the case of panic disorder, uh, which is an anxiety disorder, and major depression, which is a mood disorder, the, 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 the separation of them is, in, is a totally artificial. Um, it's very important to recognize that there are these deeper endophenotypes, as, as they're called, sort of invisible, um, internal, natural kinds, uh, which explain these apparently disparate surface phenomena. Um, just to hint at um, the, uh, a further instance of the sort of thing I'm talking about, OCD, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, the anxiety that goes with that, which is also it's classified as an anxiety disorder, the anxiety that goes with OCD is also mainly of a panicky type. Um, and guess what? OCD also has high comorbidity with depression. So um, thanks for that question. Um, it's given me an opportunity to say a, a number of things that I think uh, need to be said.